June. I'm going to introduce the person who's going to introduce the speaker. <coughs> she needs, uh, but uh, Cece Robertson is the oh, this is good. PR woman for the Hawking Hospital <laughs> of Healthcare. She's uh, also my vice president. She's going to be uh, serving on the board again, uh, and she's awesome. So here's Cece. Awesome. <coughs> you may not even need this. So. I know. He was saying how loud the mic was, and I said, well, that's going to be bad because I talk too loud anyways. Um, Cece Robinson, Director of Community Relations, Joshua, <laughs> which that is marketing and PR. Um, community Relations, which is what is today, probably the favorite part of my job, and position recruitment. Um, we're going to co-speak today because I have with me Ms. Rebecca Moore. Um, Rebecca is with the Green River District Health Department and our two organizations work hand in hand to try to take care of the health needs of our community along with several other community partners. Um, we um, today are going to talk to you about um, a community needs assessment. So as I uh, briefly touched on earlier, um, Nonprofit health care organizations every three years, we step back and we go into our community and we say, we need to hear from you guys. What are the health priorities? What are the top needs of our community? And so I'm gonna urge you today to think not just as a patient, but also as, um, as representing the different sectors of our, of our commerce that you represent. When, you're, when your customers come in, what are needs that you see they have that we as a healthcare community can address. Um, we're going to really urge you to um, broaden your perspective of what health means and what um, the healthcare community is. Because um, all of our banks that are with us today, you guys are part of the healthcare community. Financial security is part of a person's health. Um, many of our organizations that are here today um, take care of different healthcare sections of our, 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 of our for our citizens. And Becky's gonna do a little bit more on that, talk about the definition of health. Um, when we started, I think I got to most people at the table to say download our survey on a, um, um, using a QR code. So you can take that survey on your phone. You also have uh, a hard copy of the survey on the table. So if you were um, very studious and have already completed your survey, thank you. But if you hear something in this presentation today that you think, ooh, I think I'd like to provide input on that, feel free to go back and take that survey again or just put it on your um, hard copy on the table. Um, if you do fill out the hard copy on the table, maybe just drop it on the chamber table as you go out the door. Um, and if you want to share the survey, it will be on, um, Hawkeye Healthcare's Facebook page, um, starting at the 1st of July, as well as on our website, which is ochcares.com. Um, Becky and I are representing our two individual organizations, but we're also representing our Hawkeye Health Coalition. Any of our Health Coalition members stand up. We've got several of them here with us today. Stand up, stand up. So the third Thursday of every month, civic organizations, healthcare organizations, volunteer groups, thank you all, um, gather together at the Hawkeye Extension Office from 11.30 to one. It's the third Thursday of every month. And we look at how can we address healthcare needs? How can we change the healthcare culture of our community? And um, next month on July 21st, where we're doing a real quick survey today, we're gonna do a really in-depth survey next month, where we're going to allow time for lots of discussion on um, not only where we currently are as a community, but what are some tactics we can put into place to take us to the next three-year um, improved health status. So with that, your survey today has about 16 questions. We're not gonna keep you here forever because Chuck Price is my timekeeper. He's doing this at the, or no, what's coming my signals again? This is halfway, this is shut up, get off the stage, you're done. Um, we're gonna ask you to provide your opinion of our last three-year cycle. And that is um, was performed in 2019. You have one copy on your table. 
Um, what we go through today, we'll kind of touch briefly on what we, we looked at in those last three years. Most healthcare organizations that completed a community health needs assessment, sometimes called a CHNA, um, they're gonna have to take a lot of those same tactics they included in that three-year cycle and pull them forward. Um, we've all been a little busy dealing with COVID the last few years. So um, we're also gonna ask you to help rank the health needs of our community. And then we're going to, um, we want to get kind of a feel for um, new territory for us. What's that long-term impact of COVID look like on our community? What's it look like on your personal health? What does it look like on your economic health? All those things tie together. And so with that, we are going to move on to our next slide. And I'm gonna have Josh come up, because I'm not 100% sure how to do the slides. Am I just hitting the button, Josh? <laughs> you okay. I forgot to ask you where you loaded it. And while he is pulling that up, I'm gonna have Ms. Rebecca Warren come up and kind of broaden our definition of health. Thank you. I'm Becky Horn, recruiter of District Health Department. I used to be the tobacco lady who worked for a smoke free Ohio County. For a couple of years, if any of you are in HR or nursing, I was the COVID lady that would call you when you had uh, somebody in your workforce that had COVID and we would all freak out and then try to get them out of your building. So that was my job for two years. But my real job is I, really I was not very popular at all. No. Uh, and then uh, my real job is accreditation coordinator, public health services manager. So that means a lot of community health assessments, data, performance management. So at the health department, for our community health assessments, we are really, 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 really focused on health, but not your traditional terms of health. Uh, we're focused on health equity, and equity is not equal. So that's kind of where our, our new saying, that's my new saying. Just because I make something equal does not mean it's equitable. Because I have been very guilty, and, I, and some of us all have, of having a, I had a really great program and nobody came. Or the people that came weren't the audience that I wanted. But did I have it at a time that they could come? Did I have transportation? Did I make it equitable where people could come? Um, I was also a, a teacher or a facilitator at the high school where I had a lot of kids. And when we talk about health equity, I really think about the kids because there are some kids that get a great launch into life. And there are some kids in my class that I was just thrilled that they showed up that day and I want to give them a high five because the fact that they even got there that day was a big achievement for them. So we really have to think deeper uh, in terms of health. We talk about social determinants of health and that's kind of just your, your, your poverty, your access to care, your access to healthy foods, we have a chance to be healthy. Social determinants are the, like the fertilizer for the tree. And if your fertilizer is not any good, it probably looks like my tomato plants look right now with, with a Charlie Brown Christmas tree with one tomato on it. So, but if you have great fertilizer, you've got a beautiful plant. Well, some of these kids, some of our people, they don't have the foundation. So what can we do to dig deeper? And it's not just, Health department and hospital it's everybody um, I know in one county we always talk about the library the library library and there's like you're like what's the library have to do with health and if you can't if you're not educated it's hard to be healthy it's hard to get a job get that insurance you need uh, that library offers broad uh, internet access to kids it's walkable so you've got kids coming after school that can get their homework done that they can't get done at the house and have a safe place to go after school that's equitable we're all involved in health whether we're manufacturing whether we're a bank and if we're not and collectively we only do as well as the least of us so as a county if we're going to grow and prosper we can't just grow and pop, prosper for some we have to grow and prosper for all so that's kind of where we're at so that's what you want job yeah keep that mind <laughs> oh. i'll talk loud to keep the mind so we already talked about how you can um, complete your survey um, leave your printed copy on the table or on we really urge you come join us next um, Thursday or July Thursday July 21st because we want to really delve into some of those social determinants deterrence and that Becky talked about um, we've already done all of this so first on your survey you're going to talk about what's the role you play in the community that kind of helps us as we're taking this data 
and we're looking to see what's your perspective you're coming at us from. So you can easily take care of that. I think, is it pretty easy to use the survey on the phone? Yeah, okay, I just got the halfway marks. So I better speed it up. So pretty easy to use it. These, we're asking you to, do, you to prioritize for us what are the populations you feel are most in need. Again, not just you yourself, what you see within your businesses and your organizations. So take a quick moment, go through there, check as many as you want. You may think every one of those groups has um, a high priority need. And again, this data will just allow us to, um, to focus on our efforts over the next three years. Um, this is a test. This is only a test of your community needs assessment. Um, on your table, we had the former um, health needs assessment. Um, our focus when we started this optimistically in 2019 prior to COVID was we wanted to focus on mental health. We know in our community that a lot of that transient housing, um, a lot of, um, of um, different interactions with the law, some of that really doesn't stem from criminal behavior, it stems from mental health care issues. So how can we expand mental health care services to our community? And we've done a good job in that area. Substance abuse, alcohol, tobacco, other drugs and healthy lifestyles, and that's ex exercise, nutrition. So those were the three umbrella strategic objectives we had last cycle. And so with that, I think they asked you maybe to share some things that you've noticed in our community over the last three years. Um, an example I can use for mental health would be the fact that Ohio County Healthcare, we opened Ohio County Healthcare Behavioral Health Service Line. Um, we, one of our primary care providers wanted to focus on mental health, so we were able to bring that in-house and able to employ and offer mental health care services, and we um, additionally want to grow that service line. We have an Ohio County Health Care um, Mental Health Coalition that meets in conjunction at times with our health coalition, and so that has given a forum to our local health mental health care providers to get together and say, what can we do? Um, we also, in mental health, have, um, I think that Mental Health um, Coalition um, has started a suicide walk to help raise awareness. So those are just some tangible items that I can think of we've done. Substance abuse and alcohol, so much, Becky. Um, you all also have a Ohio <coughs> County ASAP group. Uh, Dustin is a member and Cece. Uh, and that group meets the fourth Thursday at noon at the community center. And what we do is focus on substance abuse, and we've done some great things with that. Um, we have funded, you guys have a narcotics officer, and we have funded that position for the first year. Uh, and what that narcotics officer has done, he's focused strictly on narcotics, and he's made Ohio County not hospitable to anybody that's gonna run drugs through this county, because he's that. caught so many. But not only have we done that, you the Ohio County uh, has done an amazing job of hiring somebody that will transition the people that are narcotics officer catches into treatment because we can't just arrest people and stuff them in the jail and call them a good job because that's definitely not health equity that's not equitable what he does is he finds treatment for these guys and gals but he also helps them with jobs uh, helps them find housing because it's not just in the past we have all been guilty of being like you're not healthy, you're a drug user, you have diabetes, here's your treatment, good luck. Well, it costs a lot to treat people with substance use, diabetes, and all these things. It's way cheaper if we could stop all these things and break the cycle of all these things. So that's what the Health Coalition and ASAP is trying to do. Perfect. Healthy lifestyles, um, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the focus on healthy lifestyles has been on COVID testing, treatment, and vaccination. Um, and I can't think of a better way to um, preserve a healthy lifestyle than preserve a life. And so that has been a, a major focus. These are things we've done. You may recognize other things in the community, but these are things to keep in your mind as we look at this snapshot. Over the three years, this is where we are. And I think that's at your table. Um, things that stand out to me is in Ohio County, um, it's about, um, four times four in one people compared to the state average have access to a provider. That's something as a health care organization I can have an impact at. That's something Ohio County Healthcare can have an impact on. We can recruit additional providers. We can bring more 
access to care. We can better streamline the care we provide. Maybe like Becky talked about, maybe it's not adding another provider. Maybe it's making <laughs> sure that our hours are um, accessible to the um, community members we have. Um, everything you see on here cannot be taken care of by the health department or by the hospital system. Um, a lot of things on here, we're going to have to have um, the help of our local civic groups, our businesses, our, our local government. We're going to have to have citizens who are willing to advocate for legislative change. And so these are just things we want you to kind of be thinking about as you go forth, uh, what factors that can influence the health of the community. And, and one thing that I, I want to point out as far as everybody's health, I don't think my best friend, my best COVID friend from Purdue is here. Is Purdue here? Well, they're, they're usually somewhere. Um, I called <laughs> Purdue and Tyson, our, my best friends from COVID, because we were, we were in charge of business for COVID. And at the beginning of COVID, our Burmese and Hispanic population was hit very hard. We have a list at the health department, you know, they would come in and Purdue would call and Tyson would call out in the Webster County and just, how do we stop this? How do we stop this? And very, very early in the pandemic, we got together with Purdue Tyson and our hospitals and we created fact sheets, videos. We went to where they lived and we told them in their language, in a way they could understand and went to them what to do to prevent COVID. And within the first, you know, start March, April and May was awful with those populations. Come midsummer of the first year, we didn't have probably any Burmese or Hispanic coming in. All we needed to do was go to them and tell them. We couldn't just- Make it equitable. We made it equitable. We just can't throw out a box sheet into the wind and say, I hope people read it. We had to make it equitable. And Purdue and Tyson was were some of our biggest partners and our best partners during those first months of COVID. And they're the chicken factories. They don't think they're healthcare, but they were definitely healthcare. Well, they were healthcare. Um, so that sums up what we've done. So Chuck, I'm gonna have to go fast with the next part. All of this background information is what you should be thinking about as we're making these choices going forward. So give me a yes or no on that slide. Um, we already talked about what uh, finding health is. We want to make it equal and equitable and that it's not just going to your doctor's office or the ER. Health is a much broader category. Um, we've started with the disease management on seven. So you can start at um, rank these. One, not important at all, to extremely important. And we just really took the top <clears throat> diseases that impact our community. Um, so if you can, on paper or on your phone, you can take care of that ranking. Um, and if there's something else, this one is particularly valuable to me because it helps drive our medical staff development. If there's a, a um, disease or chronic illness that you think we need to be focusing on in this community and um, write it down, let me know. Um, this is some of those community factors. Um, I think really big right now is transportation and housing, affordable housing. Um, we think that we don't have a homeless problem in Ohio County, but we do. We have a lot of teens or a lot of kids who are couch surfing, our families couch surfing. We may not see them on the street corner with a sign saying, please donate money, but we see them in our ER. We see them in our help office. We see them in our physician offices. We see them in our jails that it's, it, it's really hard to be healthy if you don't have a home to live in or you don't have a place to wash your clothes or you don't have a car to get you to your appointment. And especially in Ohio County, we're the fifth largest geographic community. So if you're way up in Rosine or in Fordsville and I'm telling you, you gotta come see your doctor at the hospital, that can be 20, 30 minutes. You may not have the gas money. I think uh, COVID also showed when our access to childcare and our education system went down, mm -hmm. that was a struggle for a lot of families. So a lot of families don't have that backup system, uh, that net, that support, that village. So when one of those things go down, that takes down their ability to pay their bills, to keep the housing. Not everybody has a, a safety or a, you know, a, a fund that they can go to when things get bad, you know, paycheck, a lot of, a lot of people can't come up with $400 for a, a bill, an extra bill. So COVID taught us many, many lessons. Yes. I, I, what I think a statement I always think of is survival mode is exhausting. 
and you can only live in survival mode for so long before you start making some desperate choices and that's how that cycle perpetuates um, individual factors so this is things that we can control are these are factors within our community that we can um, have a direct impact on so um, take a moment and you rank those again one not very important five very important I think it's hard to look at any of those and say not very important <laughs> but um, and be sure to give me some advice on where to go forward if you don't see something up there let me know um, and then this one is where it gets interesting <coughs> the territory for us impact of COVID-19 um, I think we want a generalized answer here of it didn't impact me I think any, can anybody in here say no impact no change <laughs> he's laughing um, I think everyone had um, um, an impact from COVID but we kind of want to put a ranking to that and um, you'll choose one obviously um, which of the sectors of your life which of those community health factors or community factors was impacted and if you want to you can answer this as yourself but also think about as people were coming into your offices did they say I don't have enough money to buy food because <laughs> I was in the hospitality industry and we're not working right now I mean we want to know where all those areas are because that's where we have to start rebuilding um, this one is particularly important to me as um, a healthcare um, entity is delayed care um, people were scared during COVID to come into hospitals or into their physician offices um, it was a scary time and while we're seeing a return um, visits we are also noticing pretty strongly with mammograms and colonoscopies um, a lot of preventative screenings we're seeing those cancer rates rising and a lot of that is that people have not got the the preventative screenings that we all got in the habits of doing so you can check as many as that apply to you and um, again this is a great one to tell me other on um, next steps um, how can we as healthcare providers be a trusted resource to you during the um, challenges of COVID um, we'd all like to think COVID's completely in our rearview mirror and um, it's not COVID's here to stay we are very pleased to see right now with the recent moderate um, surge of cases that we're not seeing the hospitalization but that could change oh, Chuck is cutting me off so we want to know how when you need us next time we can better serve you um, this one's really important telehealth I'm almost there Chuck telehealth um, this is huge for healthcare equity but in our community it's not equal to everyone during COVID, when we wanted to do telehealth visits to keep you safe and take care of your healthcare needs, we found that the connectivity through our county did not allow people to conduct a telehealth visit. Maybe the phone they had was an iPhone 5 or a flip phone, and we were telling them you have to have an iPhone 10 to connect to our program. So those are some of those um, individual factors, community factors that would impact their physical health. Um, this is probably my favorite one because I love strategic planning I want you to tell me which of those areas are most important to you so as we as a healthcare um, organization as we as a healthcare coalition as the health department goes forward which of these areas do you see that we need to put our dollar our time our labor all of our resources and 16 you can answer I think I'm gonna remove that because I feel it's redundant but please go ahead and answer it today if you'd like so questions Any questions do we broaden your definition of health who all took the survey on their QR code okay who's gonna leave me one on the table okay you other people who didn't raise your hand I'll be waiting at the door for you <laughs> one way or another you're doing a survey today so thank you for your time Becky anything you want to add no thank you guys for coming and um, I just hope that you all consider yourself partners with us in just making the county better because it's good to say you both. Thank you guys. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the business portion of our meeting. Do we have any announcements? 
anybody wanted to give today? Okay. There's no meeting in July or August, so that's really important. Don't forget that. Okay, and then we'll move on to our door prize drawing. So go ahead and get your tickets ready. Okay, eight, eight, seven, three, eight, nine. Woo! We have a winner. Okay. Okay, so was that for the holiday roll tickets? Yeah. Well, the first one's holiday roll tickets, so I guess so. Yeah. Sure, really enjoy that much more than like I was. Okay, and then we have one more, so keep those tickets ready. We have some tickets from Beaver Dam Tourism, and I'm sorry, Holiday World was provided by our sponsor today, Commonwealth Community Bank. Thank you. And then Beaver Dam Tourism has provided Rock the Dam tickets. So thank you both of you guys for providing those. Eight eight seven three seven nine. We have a winner, but they're fighting. Why are you fighting to give tickets away? I don't know. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and recognize our outgoing officers and directors. So if you guys want, you can just stay up here after you get your token here. <coughs> Jeanette Weedman, I don't think she's here today. Travis Johnson, he left. Danetta Crawford. I don't stand up with my Shannon Coots. How long have you been on Shannon? <laughs> Ever since I was three. <laughs> All of me. So those are our four outgoing officers and directors. So thank you all. Okay, and then Josh Coppett. Okay. Judy, are you going to get a picture? Josh is our incoming president for the 2022-2023 year. Okay, and then all of our 2022 and 2023 officers and directors, if you would, go ahead and come up. We're going to do the installation of our officers and directors now. And Shannon Coots is going to lead our oath of office. Um, and then after she has, we'll give you an opportunity to announce, to introduce yourself. Sarah, I have a question. If Josh cannot be president and I'm vice president, do I get to use the gap? You did. Okay. <laughs> I accept that. And then don't go anywhere because we're going to take a picture after. No, we're not. It's we're very doing. important to Judy. We're going to do it, Josh. We're going to watch what everybody's home. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to read the oath of office. The office to which you have been elected is one of dignity and importance. In accepting this office, you undertake a responsibility which is not to be assumed lightly or carelessly discharged. You are charged with the duties of seriously and resolutely furthering the objectives of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce. With the policy and bylaws as your guide, you, are, you must be ready to exercise the function of the office with which you are entrusted. Further, you are charged with governing this organization according to the laws of democracy. Under which, laws every, under which laws every person who wishes to speak shall be heard. Toward the end, that in every matter considered, the best opinion shall prevail through the expressed 
will all will of the majority and the best course of action followed. So, um, do you accept this charge? Okay. So, repeat after me and raise your hand. I do solemnly swear and affirm. I do, I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will seriously execute the office of director. Of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce, and will to be the best of my ability serve as a living example of the organization's philosophy and beliefs embodied. And beliefs and beliefs embodied. embodied. In the Chamber of Commerce Creed. In the Chamber of Commerce Creed. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. I will share. Okay. All right. So. Yes. Why do I have to get like in five? Because you're beautiful. Y'all did that really well. Okay, so I am now officially the president of the Chamber of Commerce and I'm going to dismiss the meeting and we'll be back in August. So, no, September, September sorry. July and August, we're off, so we'll be back here in September. Have a good night. Have a good day.